Whenever I start a, um, a new firing for my own kill or when I go somewhere like for a workout like this, uh, I always start off making some uh, small serving bowls just, just to get a touch of the clay and find out how it works and, uh, and get into the mood of throwing and so on. Uh, and I make a lot of these things in my studio too. because I like to make them. That's it. I was telling Rodney why I agreed to do this workshop, that the only way it made any sense was if we could get hold of a, a wheel like this, because I, I use the wheel for the same, as you all know. Uh, but uh, what I'm looking for is trying to, to bring the, the pot to life. had learned from the assistant the previous year and so uh, it, it was very very bad instruction but um, we, <coughs> we had we had a couple of things going for us uh, one uh, we each had just been in America uh, before we went over there and uh, we had arranged to uh, go back on the same boat as he did and we talked talked and talked and talked going across the Atlantic Ocean. And it was, it was, this was a long time ago, and it was a very slow boat. I think it took us about seven days to get there. And uh, when we got there, our parents said, in town, and uh, he said, well, do you want to live with me? And uh, we said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when we uh, addressed this with Leach, We need, I hate to say, those sold for much higher prices. Uh, we're supporting all of us. <laughs> uh, so uh, Frank was fired, and the <laughs> pottery changed. <laughs> uh, so this happened long after we had left the place, but we, we heard the story, and it's, very, it's an interesting thing. Because uh, it's true, you know, if you're selling pops for nickels and dimes, uh, well, you've got to sell a hell of a lot of them to, to earn a living. Um, and that was an ideal that Leach had. Uh, it came from what he saw in Japan where he learned his pottery. Uh, but uh, uh, he, he also, I guess, forgot to take into account the fact that uh, uh, the best known potters in Japan, they made far more than uh, uh, any of us will ever make. And, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're not doing the sort of things, let's say, that. Uh, uh, Volkus and Kaneko are doing and selling them for hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they are, they are selling nice, nice pots, medium-sized, large pots. Well, like I say, those 20 little vases that Shimoka made, uh, they, they're worth about uh, 15 to 20 thousand dollars in a Tokyo sale. 
So uh, uh, Japanese potters earn a lot of money uh, if they if they want to, and if they're good. Heaven, seeing all these wonderful pots. I never saw so many bad pots. <laughs> really, really bad pots. Very well made, incredibly well made, because they had the craft, but they were dead pots. They were just awful. They could have been pressed out in a mold or uh, jiggered and jollied and, uh, and made by machine. Uh, and the, and the, the potters were simply turn, turning themselves into machines. And, uh, that's something I think that uh, any person who wants to work in repetitive throwing has to be careful of. Uh, I found out that, uh, you know, uh, if I'm not careful, I, I drop into this and I, I, I have to jolt myself out by trying something I've never done before and just putting it beyond my, my normal range and, and seeing what happens. I would tell you that uh, when I was working at the university, as a full professor and drawing a pretty good salary and had a lot of time for working in the studio uh, and, and all. Uh, I was uh, making my university salary plus pottery and when I retired and decided to make just pots, why, uh, within a couple of years I found out I could earn much more money than I could teaching in pottery. So uh, you don't have to sell pots for a lot of money to, to earn a good living. And I think uh, the question becomes one of what do people consider a good living, and that's each person has to decide for themselves. And a father, well, you, you can sell your pots for less money. And so uh, they had worked out ways of...